name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say, Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you.
is difficult with the coronavirus and we can't go to church and worship together. I hope that the Lord's grace and peace be with us at home and at home. And thank you for giving me the opportunity to pray uh, for today's worship. I will pray. Heavenly Father, thank you that you give us salvation through Christ Make us your children and give us grace to worship on a holy Sunday. Although the whole world is in trouble with the coronavirus, 
I also appreciate the safe and life of all the members of the CIC per week. And thanks for allowing us to worship together this time online. Every time we worship God and bow our head in prayer, we confess that there is a lot of weakness and transgression in our words and words. Lord, sometimes we are sorry and angry when we see uh, when there is no justice, mercy, and humbly in the world. But we confess that there are many times when our heart and life are full with pride, pride, judgment, and fault of our one, and never look back. Please give us, forgive our weakness and since forsake our hard heart through this time of mercy, give us hearts as children of the Lord and help us to overcome our life in the world with the grace of the Lord's heart and the Holy Spirit. Even now, many people around the world are infected with coronavirus and are dying. In, it is a very difficult situation um, economically. There are lots of troubles with medical officers and the government for these reasons. Please give them the wisdom and strength, especially to all the leaders of the countries. Please help us look back at the social week in this uh, difficult situation and to do good things that can help and take care our labors and na uh, nations, so help us to overcome the difficult things through God's wisdom and compassion. According to your word, help us to wake up spiritually and training for the church, and then we could play roles as the salt and light of the world. In time, help us to the opportunity to live a more mature life. We pray for the community with the CIC, although the CIC believers can't be together. This opportunity allows us to think about the value of the Christ Godly Church, come to Jesus closely, pray for each other's and neighbors, community, nation, and whole world, and take a responsibility for small practice. Especially, please be with the power and the grace of the Lord with the pastor who pray and labor for the church and the staff who work in a hidden place who serve with praise. And please keep all the teachers and students of DCIS where our church is located and keep them safe and bless them to be a beautiful companion with the church. Please read the pastor who gives the preach today open our hearts to become a precious worship service with the grace of the Holy Spirit and give us the strength to live a life a week according to the grace. I pray in the name of Jesus.
boys because they just don't play One day more. Hey CIC family, it's good to see you again. Yeah, um, I hope and pray that you do all well in the midst of this COVID-19 uh, situation. Uh, we just saw this family singing, you know, the Les Miserables, uh, one more, one day more, one more day, one day more. Any, anyway, uh, you can see that what kind of good outcome can you know, be, there there can be when you are super bored. The whole family gets bored to the point of their uh, their their limitation. <laughs> anyway, I really enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed that too. Uh, I don't think uh, that the, you guys are in, in any different situation than this family in the video. Uh, we all are going through this tough time. Uh, now today we are in the last we're in the series called the uh, travel city and we'll do the this week the, today we'll do the last part of the series we've been looking at the uh, stories that related to a uh, journey uh, or trips uh, in the gospel of Luke uh, chapter 10 and we'll look the last part of uh, chapter 10 uh, we'll, so let's jump into the text Gospel of Luke, uh, chapter 10, verse 38 to 42. I'll read you the, the, the ESV version. Now as they went on their way, Jesus entered the village. And a woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to his teaching. But Martha was distracted with much serving. And she went up to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many things, but one thing is necessary. Mary has chosen the good portion which will not be taken away from her. Like the video we saw, and nowadays we probably feel the same. Uh, we kind of feel helpless. You know, there is not much we can do about this given situation. Some of you are working at home instead of working at work. And some of you maybe lost your work even. And many of you, I mean, some of you students who uh, did, didn't now can't go to school anymore, have to take online classes. And some of you are maybe in a very serious financial a crisis because of this situation. But like I said, none of us chose to walk on this path. It just happened to us. We feel very helpless. There's nothing much we can do. And I was actually thinking, uh, experiencing this helpless status of our lives, I was thinking, kind of looking back, maybe, maybe the reason why we struggle a lot with this helpless situation is that Usual times, we are kind of caught up with to-do list 
uh, obsessed life. What I'm saying is, uh, we feel so helpless because there is not much we can control. But most of time, when you know we are not in the, this COVID nineteen situation, we want to control everything in our lives. We want we have this to do list, and we feel like we gotta. Uh, finish every task that's on that list, then our life is under control. Yeah, literally under under control. That's what we want in our lives. But uh, it's kind of funny to know that this COVID nineteen situation is not the only time when we experience that helplessness in our lives. Actually, if you look back in your life. You probably experienced this before already many times. You there are places in your life, the journey of your life, you feel very helpless. They're not you realize that there isn't much you can do about that situation, and you feel very lost. Uh, we the very first family vacation that I took with my kids, uh, my wife, it was a trip to Gangneung, about four hour driving from here to Gangneung. If you drive fast, you can get there even with a shorter uh, time. But I'm a slow driver, so four hours plus more plus thirty minutes. That's me. Anyway, the very first vacation to Gangneung, uh, I was driving. My wife was sitting next to me. My two kids back then, like they were like six, four, six and four, sitting in the back. Uh, it was the first time they actually experienced a long distance ride, a uh, car ride. Uh, before then, until then, they never actually, you know, had that kind of long ride. So obviously, it was hard for them. You know, the most frequently asked question by kids when they're in the car when you go long, what is it? Are we there yet? Yeah, they kept asking that question at me, like. Daddy, are we there yet? Are we there yet? Like five minutes later, are we there yet? Two minutes later, are we there yet? I'm like, yeah, almost there, almost there. Just, you know, hang on. They go like, are we there yet? Are we there yet? They were having a miserable time. Right? Four hours. I mean, it was a long time for me to drive too, but it was a long time for my kids to endure in the back seat. I mean, they ran out of things to do. They were like, they did the counting cars, you know, counting, I mean, just finding interesting spots on the in, outside. They've done everything. They're like, they're just bored. They just kept asking, are we there yet? Uh, feels like they are like uh, in the help, helpless situation from their view, right? There's nothing they can do, you know, there's nothing they can do to shorten the time of right. All they can do is just sit and complain. It's, there's not, there isn't much they can do. Looking back, you know, just just remembering that trip, thinking of that trip, one thing I kind of noticed is that what what if what if everything's same? You know, the long ride is same, boredom is same, feeling helpless is same. But what if the driver was not me? What if driver or a stranger? person uh, uh, like I don't know or a big dude who whom my kids never met before my kids are in the car the driver is a big guy very strange strange person and they gotta be in the car now it's not really time of boredom anymore now it's time of danger it's not a family trip anymore you know it's uh, kidnapping, right? Uh, this is not this is kind of thing is not supposed to happen in their lives. So I was thinking, everything stays the same. Just changing the driver from me to a strange a stranger. Now the whole thing, whole thing becomes like totally different picture. What I'm saying is, we are so obsessed with what we do in the given situation. We are so obsessed with if there's anything that we can do to control the situation. But the thing is, many times we find ourselves in a situation where we feel helpless. There is not really much you can do. But what really matters most in this situation is not really your to-do list. It's not really whether you have control over the situation. It's actually 
whether the driver is your father or a stranger. What I'm saying is, maybe my kids were in the car and they are in this journey to the destination they've never been to before. But they still can be just bored. They can just still be, just feel helpless, yet they feel safe and secure. Why? Why? Because they know that the driver is their father. Martha was busy with the to-do list. I mean, Jesus came to, obviously, I mean, it's totally understandable. Jesus visited your house. What would you do with him? Let's, there's a lot to do. If Jesus visits my house, we have to clean, we have to clean, <laughs> we have to clean, you know, a lot of cleaning to do. And obviously, you got to prepare food, not just ordinary junk food, right? You got to prepare like something excellent, right? You can't just, uh, you can't just uh, uh, warm a microwave your frozen food <laughs> to serve Jesus, right? There must be a lot to do. I mean, so I totally understand Martha. Martha's situation makes sense. She's busy. She's got there's a lot to do. She's got to prepare this party, right? Now she's looking at Mary. Ah, oh, Mary, Mary. I mean, you all do have you all do have that sibling, right? That sister or brother, always lazy, <laughs> always lazy, right? Mary's kind of like that. Martha just looks at looked at the um, looked at looks at Mary. She what she what she's doing? She's just sitting right in front of Jesus and listening to Jesus' teaching. Ah, oh, but that's typical Mary. Martha goes to Jesus. Jesus. You gotta tell her something. She's been lazy, you know. I've been doing all the preparation, and she's supposed to help me. She's supposed to do something. Now, what she's doing here? But Jesus, you know, what 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 what, what, he, what does he do? He actually takes a side with Mary. Is saying, you know what? He's taking. She Mary is taking a portion that it really matters uh, eternally. Uh, sometimes we do take, make mistakes like Martha. There's two to list for us. We gotta make sure everything, you know, is done right, correctly. You know, make sure if my career goes to the right path. Make sure my kids are doing the right things. They're in the right situation. They, you gotta make sure, you know, your life is is going as as planned, as scheduled, at least in your in your mind, in your head. But Jesus, maybe, he may say things that he actually said to Martha. Hey, maybe you're missing something. I know you're busy. I know all those things, you know, you're occupied with matter. But you know what? Maybe there's something. There's something that matters even most. What is it, Jesus? It's my presence. Jesus' presence is maybe is more important, more valuable, more meaningful than our performance. Martha was busy and she wanted to impress Jesus and all the crowd in that house that she was hosting. But Mary didn't care. Mary was happy with Jesus' presence. I heard that, uh, I heard this from a pastor who serves a a college church in Ivy League schools and he actually said he found very something very interesting when he witnessed to the students in the Ivy League and they you know became born again Christians Ivy League students what happened to them is they actually became a very studious Christian they study a lot and what they do is they become leaders in the in the in the young adults community there they try to lead and they're busy and the, the, the one thing he actually, this pastor shared with me and the other students in my seminary was that maybe we are, uh, in, we are obsessed with, you know, excellence, performance, you know, something we have to show to other people. Uh, I mean, performance matters, but grace matters more. Uh, you having control of your life matters, but you realize you realizing that Jesus, I mean, Jesus' control over your life matters even more. Sometimes we forget 
we forget that. I forget that. We are, I am too caught up with things to do, you know, editing video, filming video, this kind of thing. Just, sometimes I forget that this is actually all about grace, all about presence of Jesus, because that's what we need most. What really matters is that Jesus' presence is with us. Uh, I've been watching this sh uh, show in a uh, Korean TV show, which is called The Phantom Singers. Phantom Singers, season three. Uh, it take, it, it's one, uh, an hour and a half hour long show. I saw three episodes already. Tonight, we're, I'm going to watch the fourth one. Uh, I saw the, this show when it aired, which means I didn't really see it on the, on the Netflix or any streaming. When it airs, when it was live, I saw it. You may ask, oh, Pastor Sonny, do you like that show a lot? Not really. I didn't really see the season. I didn't really see the season one. I didn't really see, I didn't watch season two. I just watched season three. And I watched every minute of it. Uh, the reason I, I've been watching this show is that uh, there's a couple in our congregation. And then the, the, the son of that couple is a musical actor. And he actually participated in this show as a, uh, contestant so I've been watching him it's kind of funny it was just, it wasn't it's not just me watching the show my wife and my daughter too Joa because three of us actually were invited to his musical a uh, few times and the thing is last three shows I never seen him performing I never seen him singing he actually sang once but they kind of skipped it edited it out uh, so what we actually saw last three episodes Three episodes, uh, three, uh, four and three, four and a th thirty minute length. What we saw was he's a little bit of his part. Like he was saying, he his when he saw his arm, we go like we get excited. Wait, wait, wait that's it, that's it, that's it. When he sees his back half, we're like yeah, that's it, that's it. When he sees his finger like this, and oh, that's it, that's it, that's it. Well, I realized there are excellent singers in this show. There are outstanding performances in this show. We saw the uh, last three episodes. But what really matters most to us, me, my daughter, and my wife, is that his presence. Yeah, that musical actor that we know, his presence, his little finger, his little arm, anything that's caught in the scene, that excited us. And then I learned that. Maybe, maybe, you know, we we gotta have the same same heart for God too, same heart for our Jesus too. We are so looking for, we're so obsessed with the performance. I gotta do well. I, am I doing everything right? Am I following everything as scheduled, as planned, as managed, as controlled? You know, in a time like this, COVID nineteen situation it will not work. Then we feel frustrated. We feel like we're failing, but please don't, because, because what we maybe really got to look for is the presence of Jesus. You can find him everywhere in our lives. Every morning you get up, you can find the presence of Jesus. You know, whenever when you eat, you can find his presence. When you, when you walk in the park, you can find his presence. When you talk with your family, you can find his presence. And Jesus is saying, you know what, that's something that will last eternally. How can we trust Him then? How can we, how can we trust that he, His presence is with us all the time? I saw this uh, video online on the YouTube. There's a, a little boy who just got, who is, he's, 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 he, he's in the court to get this approval to be adopted to a family. And he actually invited all his kindergarten uh, friends and teachers to the court so that they can see the whole thing. And I saw the news that cover this event and really made me cry. And I want you to see this first. Finally, the kindergartner, America Strong. Five-year-old Michael Orlando Clark Jr. smiling right there. He's about to be adopted. And right behind him in this Kent County, Michigan courtroom, Michael's entire kindergarten class holding their hearts from Wealthy Elementary School in East Grand Rapids. Michael invited them all, their smiling faces filling the courtroom. 
vouching for that new son, his best friend Stephen. My name is Stephen, and Michael's my best friend. Lily, too. My name is Lily, and I love Michael. Waving those hearts, it was time. It is ordered, Michael, that your forever mom and dad will be David Andrew Eaton and Andrea Louise Melvin. The whole courtroom ready. One, two, three. Yeah. And afterward, Michael holding the mic for his new dad, David. But there was something Michael wanted to add. The workers there have just been amazing. They, I love my daddy. They, wow. I <laughs> love my daddy so much. This is just too much. This is just too much. Um, yeah, it's been amazing, obviously, how supportive they've all been. I love been. my daddy too much. Michael is loved, too, by his new parents and his entire class holding their hearts. We love Michael. How do you beat that? Good night. I love daddy. I love my daddy. What can beat that? Did you hear that? Huh? I think the Bible, the whole Bible is about that. I create, I created you. I have led your life. I have been with you all the time. Why? Why? God is saying because I want you to say that. You know, I love you, Daddy. You know, that really matters to me. That's what God is saying from that book. And did you see how happy the father and the mother and that who's adopting the son, this boy, how happy they were? I think our God is really happy. And our God's adoption of us happened on the place called Calvary, on the tree called Cross. That's grace. Sometimes you will feel frustrated. Sometimes you'll feel helpless. Sometimes you feel like there are things to do, but I'm not doing it right. I'm not really doing it properly. I'm not really following the, the plan that I have. I feel helpless, I feel lost. Well, you know what? His presence is with us. His presence is with you. And nobody can take that away from you and me. So I want you to remember that. How good our Jesus is. And how much He wants to be with us. How much He wants us to feel, carry His presence. Let's pray. Uh, Father God, uh, sometimes we feel like Martha, you know, we just want to make sure everything's right, we want to make sure, you know, I perform okay, we want to make sure I, my life is qualified, you know. But Jesus said, Mary is taking a portion that matters, that lasts forever, which is, which is enjoying presence of Jesus. Please, God, in the time like this, in the time of this COVID-19 situation, we feel helpless, we feel frustrated, we feel very uncertain about our coming days, our future. But please help us not to lose your presence. Help us to enjoy the presence of Jesus. Because where, can, where else can we find our hope? It only comes from you. Jesus, our Savior. So, God, please help us. Uh, if there's anybody who's watching this right now, going through a hard time, hardship, difficult times, or uncertain time about the future, please comfort their hearts, touch their hearts, and speak, whisper to their hearts. Tell them, we're, the, we're in the driver's seat. Though we may feel a little lost, helpless, you will carry us with you. Help us to hear that. You're awesome, God. Thank you. In Jesus' name, I pray.